If you will go in my statutes, if you will follow my ways, life will be beautiful. You'll have rainfall in its time. Your storehouses will be filled with abundance. You'll have peace. You will have an idyllic life. However, the Torah warns us, if we do not follow the ways of the Torah, if we don't go in the chukim, then it will be very, very bad. Our enemies will chase us down. Life will be very, very harsh. The pivotal point of it all is, in if you'll follow my statutes, if you follow my commandments. Rashi commenting on this says, what this means is if you will labor in Torah. If you'll labor in Torah study, then everything will be beautiful, and if you do not, then it will turn badly. This Rashi is quite difficult to understand, because there is no implication nor inference in the Pasuk to <coughs> Torah study. The Torah is very specific. If you'll follow my statutes, if you'll listen to the commandments, there are 613 commandments, Yet Rashi says what this means is if you'll labor in Torah study. And the question is, how does Rashi know that? What right does he have to say that's pshat in the Pasuk? And I believe the answer to this question is based on understanding the fundamental role that Limera Torah, learning Torah, plays in the role of the Jewish soul. The reality is that this Pasuk is telling us there is a pivot point. Either you will ascend to the heights or you'll descend to the depth both as a nation and as an individual. The human being is comprised of two different parts. There's a nefesh bahami within me, an animal soul, and there's a nefesh sikhli, a beautiful, pure soul. Both are in constant competition. The Chobos of Ovas explains to us that the two parts are constantly engaged in a fight, vying for primacy over I. Much like a muscle, the more you use it, the stronger it becomes. With <coughs> disuse, it atrophies. The more I engage either part, the stronger it becomes. Everything that I do throughout my day strengthens the Nefesh Bahami. The animal side of the human gets constant reinforcement. We're constantly eating, constantly engaging it. It will vanquish the other part. The single greatest spiritual nourishment for the soul of the Neshama is Limerat Torah. Hashem gave us this specific mitzvah of learning because it's rocket fuel for the soul and that is the pivot point. The reason why Rashi says in Bukhukosai Telechu refers to Limit Torah is because ultimately that is the pivot of the human. If a human being is involved in Limit Torah and studying Torah, he ascends, his soul becomes prominent, and he becomes a different person. And if he doesn't, he heads down the other path. The reason why the Pasuk says this is the pivot point is because it's referring to Torah. Rashi says that's Pshat in the Pasuk because ultimately that is the single pivot point in everything that a Jewish person is involved in. This Rashi and the Psukim there are very key and fundamental to understanding the challenge of life. If a Jew is not constantly engaged in Torah study, if he's not involved in learning, he's going to fall down, the mitzvahs will no longer have the same importance, they won't have the same meaning, he will be a different person. On the flip side, as long as a person is engaged in Torah study, there'll be a spiritual reinvigoration within him, he'll be nourished, he'll grow, he'll accomplish, at the end of the day, the single greatest mitzvah, the single most important mitzvah is Limit Torah, deeply studying Torah.